How's it going boys, girls, and squirrels? Local dumbass Danny Mata here. A few days ago, I put out a video about Twisted Wonderland, an upcoming anime coming to Disney Plus based on a popular mobile Japanese game. In that video, I talked about how the game hadn't been localized outside of Japan yet, and how there was very little information about it online. But here's the thing, I had written that script four months ago. But I said to myself, I said, who cares? What's four months? Surely the information in this script is still relevant. I mean, what could have happened in four months? These were all things that I had actually said to myself. Like a dumbass. In fact, in recording the video, I had noticed that some of the Wikipedia, like, paragraphs that I'd used in my script had, like, radically changed since writing the script. Didn't phase me at all, because once again, I'm Danny Mata, Dumbass Supreme. Mere seconds after posting the video, I got a plethora of comments being like, what do you mean it's not localized outside of Japan? I've been playing this game for two months. Turns out, it did get localized in other regions, and it's been playable in the United States for over two months. So now that my credibility as someone who brings you well-informed reviews has been completely obliterated. I thought I would download the game, play it for myself, and see if it's just as horny and ridiculous as I'd predicted. So strap in as I take you on a tour through Disney's totally not a dating simulator, Twisted Wonderland. Just to recap, Twisted Wonderland is a Japanese mobile game written and designed by Yana Taboso, the creator of Black Butler. It's about a magical school called Night Raven College that's divided into seven houses, with each house being represented by a different Disney villain. Despite the numerous mistakes in my previous video, I do recommend you check that one out before watching this one, because I do think it's pretty funny, and uh, I also like go over like a broad sense of the plot. So the game opens, and it's hype as hell. There's voice acting, there's production value, the art style's sick. You're in this gothic cathedral surrounded by floating coffins and a mysterious hand beckons you through a magic mirror. And you're just like, okay, Jesus, I didn't realize I was playing Bloodborne. Okay, well, if the main character's named you, then I'm gonna be me. You get to choose a Disney villain house as well as a hot little anime boy to be your escort. I'm not joking. I of course chose Kaleem Al-Azim because I'm a sucker for white hair and Kaleem's just got a face that I could never get tired of seeing. Or so I thought. So then the game throws you into the most jarringly hardcore opening fight sequence I've seen since Dark Souls 1. I thought I was gonna play a cute little slice of life game, but instead I'm getting incinerated by this manticore from hell! In terms of combat, you get to assemble an elite crack team of hot little anime boys, each with their own abilities. The combat's turn-based, and each turn you could send two of your boys to go beat up the guy for you. Each character has elemental properties assigned to them, each with their own strengths and weaknesses. And it's great, I feel like I'm role-playing the world's most cowardly drunken father. All right, who am I gonna send out? Let's see, I'm gonna send out, I'm gonna send Kaleem? Now I'm gonna send out Kaleem. Okay, boys, go get him. Papa loves you. Speaking of which, Ruggy man, I think you gotta lay off the sauce. Also, real quick, I just caught a glimpse of what my full outfit looks like in the camera. I look like somebody Fiona from Shameless would date, and he'd be like, the cool, nice guy at first who turns her life around, but then he cheats on her, and you learn that you can't trust any man. Hi, I'm Richard's son. I make money selling orphans to Nike. Your character ends up unconscious after the fight, and you wake up to this little floating cat thing named Grim. <laughs> He's here to fuck you up. It turns out your character, aka you, aka me, was mysteriously transported to Night Raven College, despite not having any magical abilities. Nobody knows why the magic mirror sent you here, but thankfully everybody's pretty cool about it. Grim wants to join too, but they are way less cool about that idea. Go get out of here, cat! Get, get the go. fuck out of here! Please, I just want an education! I said scram! You better lickety split on out of here before I lick and split those cheeks! Ha! This is where you're introduced to the rhythm section of the game, where you have to tap the screen in time with the little circles. This is fine, it's not very hard, and like, the circles barely line up with the beats of the music, so calling it a rhythm game is sort of a stretch. I don't know why they don't want Grim to join the school, I guess it's because he's like, a cat thing, but like, <laughs> like, I don't want to point any fingers here, but Leona, you should have spoken up when that decision was made. Oh yeah? We don't allow cats in the school? When the fuck did that start happening, Leona? Grim, honestly, I think you may have dodged a bullet here. This place is starting to feel a little cultish, if you ask me. And with that, the tutorial is over, and you get to visit your personal escort back at your dorm. Hey, Kaleem, what's up, buddy? The game lets you roll for ten new hot little anime boys, and let me tell you, it is immediately addicting. My roles were... 
mixed, to say the least. First off, I rolled like every member of the fuckboy society. Oh shit, what up, deuce? Deuce bag, that's my boy! Oh whoa, is this like a super rare guy? What? Trey Clover? Man, fuck Trey Clover. This is my rare pull? This dude looks like he plays trombone and grooms middle schoolers. Both equally offensive crimes in my opinion. But I also pulled some absolute banging cards as well. Oh, hello. I can't tell if you're a SWAT team member or a janitor, but I'm loving the hair. Oh, hello. Oh, this is my new favorite boy. Are you kidding me? This dude spanks. Look at him. Next to Leona King Scholar, this dude's got the biggest dom energy in the game. God, I love every inch of his fruit by the foot hair. Wow, I can't believe the most boring house would have the coolest leader. This is definitely my favorite one so far. Oh boy! Jameel Viper, how do you do? Okay, but like, this one isn't fair because Jameel literally just looks like a sexy woman, right? Look at the eyes! Look at the tongue! Dude's giving me eyes and tongue. Find me a character that looks like he fucks nearly as hard as- What is happening? Edie is halfway through pulling his goddamn shirt off. What are you, auditioning to be the next Pierce the Veil album cover? And oh my god, this dude's hair is a trillion times more ridiculous than I thought. It is truly the longest mullet. It goes down to his ankles, and it's not even like one big mane. It's like a ton of tendrils. Why do you look like this? And it was around this point that I was like- Son of a bitch, I think I love this game. The presentation is gorgeous, the music and voice acting are great. I mean, as far as I can tell, I don't speak Japanese. I thought the dialogue would be super cringy and like queer baity the whole time and like, look, it's not Shakespeare, like nothing's gonna move me to tears anytime soon, but like for what it is, it's pretty good, like, it serves its purpose. It's definitely good enough to keep me engaged with the story and characters. It just seemed like the game was taking itself a lot more seriously than I originally gave it credit for. And then I started poking Kaleem. <laughs> The second you leave the main story, this game becomes exactly what you expect it to be. The little anime boy you chose in the beginning just hangs out at your dorm and like, flirts with you. So that's super uncomfortable, I definitely hate that. But then you've got what are called vignettes, which are like character specific side stories that you can unlock for each student. Like this one, where Cater Diamond just goes around seducing everyone into letting him throw a party. Well, I can't call it a real party till I've got at least one more person. Gotta be someone who's a real heart throb like you. Uh, I'm not sure I follow why it's so important, but you want someone who's an all-around catch, right? Oh, Leona could work, since he's a prince. Any reason you decided to waltz into my territory like you own the place? Ouch, if looks could kill. Just give me a hot second to explain, okay? First off, could not have said it better myself. Leona, nice to meet you, loving the chest, I mean vest. Portrait or not, I respect ladies, and Rosaria is a lady. Oh, Leona, please, leave some for the rest of us. Leona's kingdom is all about being respectful to ladies. Oh, yes they are, yes they are. Where's that sign up sheet at? But anyway, back to the main story. You and Grimm become friends and run into Ace Tropola. <laughs> Who's a psychopath? He explains the lore of all the Disney villains the houses are based on in a sequence that makes you feel like you just stumbled into the magical world of Nazi Germany. This is the first time I was really like, oh yeah, this is a school full of kids who worship mass murderers. Grimm and Ace get into a fight, some hijinks ensue, and they end up breaking a super expensive chandelier. Now you, and by you I mean me, and by me I mean you, Grimm, Ace, and my boy Deuce gotta travel to an abandoned dwarven mine and find a gemstone that'll fix the chandelier before they're expelled. So now you get to fight a fun, charming boss in the abandoned- JESUS CHRIST! <laughs> I mean, now you gotta fight a nightmarish hell creature in the abandoned dwarf mines. And I'll be honest, I couldn't fucking kill this thing for the life of me. I tried like six different times and just wasn't doing nearly enough damage. And so I was like, okay, I've gotta upgrade my boys or something. So I put them through flight school. <laughs> Oh, hey, Kaleem, but that didn't work, so then I made them study history. But then that didn't work, so... Yeah, cool, nice to see you too, Kaleem. And then I was like, maybe there's something in the store I'm supposed to buy to... Yeah, cool, whatever. Or maybe like one of these options down here... Ma, 
数えたことはないけど Shut up! Apparently you have to select your card roster where you can upgrade the level of your boys and their spells with honey. I did that, killed the boss, and finally beat the prologue. After that, I did play a little over halfway through book one, but I did want this video to just kind of be like a brief well-informed overview of like what the general game is about. The game later introduces some new mechanics like exam taking, which is really cool. Um, but you know, I, I think this is about as much as I'm going to go over. I definitely am going to keep playing this game though. The art style is great. The production value and just general overall value you get is super high considering this is a free game that so far has been really generous with the unlockables. Collecting and leveling up your own roster of characters is really addicting and rewarding. And even though the combat and rhythm portions of the game are just fine, I do enjoy seeing the characters interact with each other in the story mode and unlocking their vignettes. And yeah, that's Twisted Wonderland. Sorry for all of those who I deeply enraged with my first video, but I hope this one kind of made up for it. And if you liked seeing my reactions to this game and want to see some exclusive reaction content, make sure you subscribe to my Patreon. Every month you'll get an exclusive video not found anywhere else, as well as access to my exclusive Discord. It allows me to keep making as much content as I do, and it really helps the page a ton. And let me know in the comments what you guys thought of this video. Have you played Twisted Wonderland? Are you enjoying it? Who's your favorite hot little anime boy? And I will see you all next time. But now I always seem to freeze the things I